How about USC, man? I was at the airport on Sunday, and I'm like, whoa. When we, I think, signed off, maybe I did it on the Cover 3 podcast. I was like, where's USC? 56th in the rankings. Now they're what? 11, 13th? Uh, big, big weekend for the Trojans. I can't wait to talk about it. They're surging. You know, we were talking about them last week. I think you and I kind of made the comment deep in the show. We're like, USC doesn't have a commitment or they only have one, right? It was Julian Lewis and Julian Lewis. Obviously, if you've been following the show, that's going to be a uh, winding road of a recruitment as Georgia and a handful of other teams uh, remained involved. But Drew, as you're alluding to, USC goes from 54 to number 11 in the 2025 24-7 24-7 sports composite team rankings. And in case you've been living under a rock or you don't follow recruiting that closely and you're waking up on a Tuesday and you say, well, how'd they go from 54 to 11? Well, let us give you a little bit of a review here. That starts with Justice Terry, the number two defensive lineman in the country, number 13 player overall. He's got a fifth star next to his name, and he's from Manchester, Georgia. And guess what? He's committed to the Georgia Bulldogs, takes a trip out to USC, Meets with new defensive line coach Eric Henderson. We'll get to him in a second. He flips his commitment. That was the start of the day. And then it was Isaiah Gibson, the number one edge in the country, number 17 player. Remember, we only have 16 five stars at this point, but he's in the top 32. So that, that's a guy that's not far off. We'll expand uh, at some point in the near future. Then they add Hilton Stubbs out of the Sunshine State, number 10 safety in the country, number 95 overall. So there you have it. Three top 100 players, two of those guys ranked in the top 20, not to mention Gus Cordova as well, three-star defensive lineman from Lake Travis uh, in Texas. So, Drew, they're sitting number four right now in the new Big Ten. Oregon's at five, Washington at 15, UCLA at 16. I think the the latter two, we're going to have to wait and see for Jed Fish. He's still getting his feet under him there. Same with Deshaun Foster. Uh, Oregon. Doesn't seem like they made their move yet, but we've been calling for this, right? We've been calling for Lincoln Riley to say, hey, let's get invested in recruiting and not only transfer portal recruiting, but recruiting to the point of attack. Drew, I think there's a lot of different ways, a lot of different avenues that we can go here. But your initial reaction to see seeing USC surge over the weekend? Well, I thought that I listened to the podcast and knew that uh, we were wondering where the Trojans were. Uh, no, Coop, remember last cycle, you brought this up to me. All right, Dan Lanning, Oregon, might have signed arguably the top defensive line class. And you brought up the fact, hey, when's the last time a West Coast school has done that? And then now it's extremely early. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but USC has two of our favorite pass rushers committed in Terry and Gibson. And then you look at the official visitors expected in the summer months, right, the May in June, I mean, Elijah Griffin, our top-ranked defensive lineman, is scheduled to take an official visit uh, and be out in L.A. So um, USC's figuring it out, and they need to do this as they move into the Big Ten. It's a line-of-scrimmage league. I think Justice Terry uh, in the middle is going to be able to you know, free some things up for them. This is the type of guy they need to get because they're not on the West Coast. And then Isaiah Gibson, he's kind of one of these wild cards for us. You mentioned it, he's number 17 in the rankings. I mean, there was plenty of conversation internally behind the scenes at 24-7 Sports about making him a fifth star. And if we had a full 32-player field right now, he would have a fifth star next to his name. So I think what's notable, Trojans in SEC country, uh, and they get two really good ones. And then, I mean, we can get into Hilton Stubbs whenever you want, but it's impressive. And then when you kind of opened up the hood and then you see, all right, USC also has, I think it's 21 top two four pro- top two four seven prospects set to take official visits in May and June. Uh, it was it was a bit foolish to question the Trojans and what was going on on the recruiting front. The positive side is that now they're up to number eleven. And they've done that in a very fashionable way going into, I would say, one of the most difficult states in the country to recruit when it comes to top tier talent. And a big part of that reason is Kirby Smart. The good thing is that the Trojans are in the driving seat. The difficult part about this is that it's March. And I, I and listen, to play devil's advocate here, I think USC fans are very uh, familiar with the story of Michael Williams, one of the best players in the country, just two years ago, was committed to the Trojans over the summer, a few months later in October, flipped to Georgia. 
I think that's where USC is right now. It's going to be very difficult. You know, I talked to some people around the Georgia program just trying to get a feel for how they're reacting to this. I feel like Georgia's been in this situation before, right? And they don't blink. We we kind of saw it last year with KJ Bolden, but it almost brings a little bit more of a extensive focus to the situation. And this is where geographical distance becomes an advantage for the Georgia Bulldogs. You mentioned Julian Lewis getting to campus, uh, obviously visiting with Mike Bobo, Kirby Smart, and staff. We'll see what happens there. We'll talk about Georgia's quarterback situation a little bit later. But you think about Georgia, the identity of their team, it comes in the trenches. And that's where USC is trying to get to. But let's kind of look under the hood a little bit. I really like what USC did on the defensive side of the ball with their hires this offseason. And it starts with the defensive coordinator they brought off, uh, brought over from UCLA and DeAnton Lynn, uh, and a guy that I'm a huge fan of after doing more and more research this morning, the son of Anthony Lynn, guy that played his ball at Penn State, had a cup of coffee in the league, uh, spent some time in the NFL. Drew, just hearing him talk, kind of listening uh, to the way that he kind of speaks about how he wants to build the roster, especially defensively, talking about what we talk about all the time, saying that the transfer portal is essentially free agency. And it's hard to build a player development program around free agency. You have to do that via high school or this way through the NFL lens, the draft. That's how you build your team. And then you supplement with free agency, which is very different than what USC has done previously over the last two years under Lincoln Riley. So uh, this would say a lot. And then Eric Henderson coming over from the L.A. Rams, you think about the success that he had with guys like Aaron Donald, Kobe Turner this past year, who they drafted, I believe, in the third round, had nine-plus sacks. Um, that was kind of the buzz, right? You hear Justice Terry talk, and you hear his dad talk, and you hear Isaiah Gibson talk, and it was a lot about Eric Henderson and what he brought to the table this guy was an all-ACC player at Georgia Tech, worked at Georgia Military College as well, from New Orleans, Louisiana. You throw in Doug Belk, who obviously has some ties to that Georgia-Atlanta area, worked at Valdosta State. Uh, I would say USC is a team more equipped to recruit the Southeast and Georgia specifically than they have been in a while. Um, but, Drew, they're in the deep end of the water now, right, with Kirby Smart swimming with the Sharks. And we heard it this morning, our, our Chris Trevino, uh, who covers USC with 24-7 Sports, was talking about Lincoln Riley said this morning, they've made massive leaps in terms of their NIL efforts. So I know this is long-winded, but what are you supposed to do if you're USC? It's not like California and the West Coast have it year after year like they did last year with guys like Jericho Johnson, uh, guys like um, Elijah Rushing, guys like Aiden Breland. It's not like that every year, right? It's maybe like that every three years. So what are you supposed to do? I applaud them going down to Georgia. The other part about this, Drew, if you can't get it across the finish line, it makes stacking that board, navigating that conversation so much more difficult. And this is going to be an incredibly difficult task for USC they should get a ton of credit, but at the end of the day, where these guys sign ultimately is what you're going to be judged by, and this is going to be extremely challenging uh, for USC to almost kind of pull off like an Ocean's Eleven type heist in the state of Georgia. Are we marking this down as like a storyline to follow? I know we're going to talk about Keelan Russell because we always do on this show later uh, later on in him getting into the Elite 11 finals, but USC, are they going to be able to hold on to these guys? You brought up Michael Williams back in the 20. Uh, the 22 cycle. Let's also not forget Elijah Pritchett visited that weekend uh, and Christian Miller, two more guys um, from the Peach State or, or from the South. And, you know, this is going to be something to follow. Can USC get these guys across the finish line? And then what happens again with uh, uh, Elijah Griffin? I forgot Jared Smith's going to take an official visit there uh, in the in the summer months. I mean, USC is in it not only for some of these top guys in the South, but those are top guys nationally on the board um i think it's a smart play by usc because you can only take what the market is going to give you there is no aiden, aiden breland as you said there is no elijah rushing so they've identified it now they got to get it across the finish line uh malik autry another guy that's going to visit out there to the auburn commit who's number 33 overall for us right now or number number 34 so a lot of big bodies going to check out the trojans i think the other thing is with usc i mean year three is it going to be Miller Moss? Is it going to be Jaden Maeva? 
right? Uh, what's it going to look like offensively? You don't have the Heisman winner there, the the presumed number one pick in Caleb Williams, certainly one of the best players college football has seen recently. And then guess what? Week one in Vegas, who you got? You got LSU, right? And then after that, a couple weeks later, you got Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Penn State, Maryland, Rutgers, Washington. It, it doesn't let up, right? Uh, now you're in the Big Ten. The reality is a little bit different. And the reason I bring up the schedule is I think a lot of this is going to have to be proof in the pudding. If, if very similar to, and this is maybe a bad use case, but very similar to Florida State last year with K.J. Bolden, everything had to go right. And it did up until it didn't, right? With Jordan Travis getting hurt, they get Georgia in the bowl game, tough hand uh, given to them. And then at the end of the day, K.J. Bolden ends up flipping after a long commitment to Florida State to Georgia. It's going to have to be box after box that USC is going to have to check to keep these guys in the boat. And the the, the hard part about this is, is navigating, all right, we're going to fight, we're going to fight, we're going to fight. How do you keep the other guys warm? Right? How do you keep the 1B guys in the boat? How do you keep them interested without moving on? That's going to be the very difficult part of this for Lincoln Riley, for Eric Henderson, for DeAnton Lynn. But Drew, I mean, um, hey, a little bit. Yeah, go ahead. Is is Florida maybe a better example than Florida State last cycle? You know, in terms I th- of I, yeah, I think I, I think both of those are right. Um, I don't know. I think it's. I think we've established that it's going to be extremely difficult. I just. You know, I think for USC, they're taking a bet on themselves. I think the other thing is, is that I talk about it all the time, like you have to have program awareness. What does that mean? Um, understand that these guys are verbally committed. They're not signed, right? Um, so the rest of the board has to reflect that. So we'll see what happens there. Drew, any more thoughts on USC? Hilton Stubbs, I think that's a big pickup. You know, big frame safety, Six interceptions as a junior for Jacksonville Mandarin, which played for a state title in Florida. He played alongside two Penn State commits. You know, I think a lot of us felt that it was going to be a a Florida, Florida State, Miami battle. And then USC just kind of wedges their way in there and gets the job done. I think uh, what that defense is going to look like moving forward, I'm not sure. But I think uh, Hilton Stubbs has some position versatility, so I like that pickup. And then again, you know, that wave of official visitors set to check out the Trojans in May and in June. I mean, it's it's kind of a who's who's list. Gleek Lockett, Andrew Marsh. I mentioned the pass rushers. They're going to get Laganza Hayward in there. Bryce Fitzgerald is safety. It's not, it's not like this was just one weekend. They have backloaded it right for commitment season, right? Everyone takes the visits in June. Decisions usually in July. Um, and and then right into training camp. Yeah, their best chance to me in terms of not just what they've done on the defensive line, but just overall. I mean, you're talking about Georgia, Florida. Uh, think about these guys that I got coming in. You mentioned Elijah Griffin, Georgia, Jared Smith, Alabama, Bryce Davis, Georgia, Lockett, Texas, Laganza Hayward, right? Autry, Alabama, Mario Nash, Mississippi. They almost have to kind of like ride the wave, like, hey, we're all in this together. We've seen it before. Getting it over the finish line is a little bit more difficult. So USC, team to watch. They're on a heater right now. Credit to Lincoln Riley. Can they get it done? That's going to be something that we'll be watching here over the next eight months or so. Guys, just a reminder, you are locked into the 24-7 Sports Football Recruiting Podcast every Tuesday and Wednesday at noon Eastern time. You can find us on X or on the 24-7 Sports YouTube channel. Make sure to like and subscribe. (laughs) 